We're going to continue where we left off in chapter 4 last week. And that's with the disciples praying and being filled with the Holy Spirit again. And we see in chapter 4 that this was different from the baptism of the Holy Ghost that the disciples received in chapter 2. Are you with me? We're going to be in the book of Acts, chapter 5, and we're going to continue in chapter 5 tonight. And we're going to see what's going on. You can go ahead and get to your place, and when you have your place, just look up and I'll let you know that you're right there with me. Amen? We're reading out of the New Living Translation. You can use the Bibles underneath your chairs so we can all follow word for word out of the same translation that it may come alive to you tonight. Amen? Amen. So chapter 4, we see that the disciples were imprisoned. Once you got to look up, I'll let you know, I'll let me know that you're there, you're with me, amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can see in chapter 4 that from preaching the gospel, preaching Jesus Christ and Him risen, preaching the resurrection, preaching the cross, preaching salvation, and teaching the people that they had 3,000 plus people get saved. Chapter 2, then chapter 3, and then chapter 4, more people got saved. Amen. And so they started to receive persecution from without. And the pressure came in from following Christ. And the first church is established in the book of Acts. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. So now that they're doing something for the kingdom, they're receiving some persecution from without. That's chapter 4. And when they were arrested, they were brought before the council, and they were told not to preach the name of Jesus Christ anymore because a man had gotten healed. Remember the man that got healed at the beautiful gate? They were on their way to church. They were on their way to have some coffee at Starbucks. <laughs> they were just walking and just going to church. And I'm pretty sure they were walking. Amen. Back then, everybody walked everywhere. They didn't have no cars or vehicles to transport. They walked every, everywhere they went. That's why in these days, it was tradition to wash the feet of those because they walked everywhere. Amen. <laughs> so here it is. A man that has been healed, made whole, who was paralyzed from birth, has been healed. They arrest the disciples, take them before the high council, and tell them, instruct them, not to preach the name of Jesus Christ anymore. Amen? Amen? Because they're starting to get startled. Because they have a following. The religious people have a following. And the apostles are raising up, and now they're preaching Jesus. They're preaching Christ and Him crucified. They're preaching the resurrection. Hallelujah? Amen. And the Council, the, the Sadducees, the Pharisees are becoming a little nervous because now they're worried about their church emptying out and them following after the apostles and them losing what? Not people, but money. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's what religion does. Hallelujah. Religion wants, wants your money. Christianity wants your heart. Amen. Jesus wants your heart. Amen. Amen. So we're going to see what happened in chapter 5 because... There's a change that's fixing to happen in chapter 5. Amen. Hallelujah. They had pressures from without. They met it after they were released from the council where they were arrested and they're being persecuted and told not to preach the name of Jesus no more. Are you with me? They're released. Then they go and they, they, they go to their houses and they begin to weep and cry what happened to them. Amen? Amen. No, that's not what happened. Come on, man. What was the first thing they did when they got set free and released from the council? They went to church. They just got persecuted. They went to church. They went back to church. Oh, when you go through a trial, don't fall apart. Go to the place that you know where they're serving up food. Go to the place you know where the river is flowing. Where you can get some nourishment. You can get some teaching. You can get some encouragement. Amen? From the church that you belong to. They prayed. They were filled. They asked God for boldness to continue to do what they were doing. And then they got more people saved. Amen. Amen. And what happened? 
They started bringing all their possessions to the church. That what they sold, they started giving and helping and supporting the kingdom of God. And I told you last Wednesday, don't go sell all your possessions and bring it to the church. Amen. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you, use some wisdom. They had many properties and many lands. They sold a few off and came to bring it to the church to offer it to the apostles. They could supply the kingdom to go forth. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's go to chapter 5. Y'all going to love this. We're in the book of Acts chapter 5. Are you with me? Yeah. Now before we read that, I want you to see verse 36 in chapter 4. Because I want to show you something that's beginning to happen. They have pressures from without. Now they're going to discover that there's pressures within the church community that's rising up. How many knows there's no perfect church? Amen? Amen. you got to know that there's no perfect church. Hallelujah. Amen. Otherwise, we wouldn't have church. I hope y'all got that. Amen? Come on now. I didn't show up looking like this. This is years in the making. Come on, man. Beautiful are the feet, the Bible says, that bring the good news. This pastor has beautiful feet. Amen. Spiritually speaking, okay? You're not going to see my feet because we're talking spiritual. Hallelujah. Come on now. Amen. Gotta loosen y'all up a little bit. Y'all a little tight tonight. Praise Jesus. It says in verse 36, for instance, there was Joseph, the one of the apostles, nicknamed Barnabas, which name, which means son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi, Levitical priesthood, and came from the island of Cyprus. He sold a field, look at verse 37, and the what he sold a field he owned and brought the money to the apostles. So in chapter 5, but there was a certain man. There was a man named Joseph. Now there's a certain man who was named Ananias, who with his wife, Sapphira, sold some property also. And he brought part of the money to the apostles, claiming it was the full amount. With his wife's consent, he kept the rest. Stop there for a minute. Now I want you to see what happened. Okay? And if you go back to an earlier part of chapter 4, it says they were all in one accord. They were all of one mind. They were all saved. They were all filled with the Spirit of God. Okay? Amen. They were all led by the Spirit of God. So Ananias and Sapphira were a part of the community of the body of believers. You understand that? They were saved. They were filled with the Spirit. And they were Spirit-led. Okay? Amen. And they saw this man named Joseph bring some money from the land they sold and gave it to the apostles and they received praise. But the apostle Joseph didn't care about the praise. He was giving it in the right heart. So Ananias and Pharaoh saw that they were receiving such praise and, con you know, and, and accommodations and just such encouragement. They wanted to mimic what they were doing it, but for the wrong reasons. So when they sold the property, they kept some of it back for themselves to make it appear as if they sold the entire property and they were bringing the entire amount to the church to support the apostles. But it was a lie. Okay? What does that sound like? I want you to hold your place there and go with me to 2 Timothy. Don't worry, we're going to get into the meat. That's just a little appetizer right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. We'll get into some really good stuff here in a second. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. You notice I don't give you the chapter real quick, so the pastor gets there a little faster before it. And I'll wait and give you the chapter where we're going to be. So I get there a little quicker than you. Amen. Are you with me? <clears throat> 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. I like the heading up there. It says, the dangers of the last days. How many knows we're living in the last day? Amen. Let's read verse 5. It says, They, Ananias and Sapphira, they, those in the last day, will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that, the Bible says. What does all that mean, Pastor? Everybody look up here. It says, having a form of godliness, that means the outside, I have the uniform of what it looks like to be a Christian. 
Hallelujah. I'm doing everything to make myself look as if I am religious. I grew up in a Catholic home. And my background was Catholic, went to Catholic school, did the confirmation, I did the communion, I did the rosary, I did all of those things, but yet there was no change within my heart. I was still dead in trespasses. I was still dead in sin because I had a form of godliness. Amen? I had what looked like the appearance of everything that appeared to be godly. Are you with me? Amen? Amen? But I denied the power because I didn't know the power which is Christ and Him resurrected. Amen. Amen. You have to encounter the Christ. You have to encounter the anointing and the Spirit of God to be transformed yes, in the heart. Amen. Not behavior modification. Hallelujah. <laughs> Not trying to force yourself to come out of something and trying to will it in your own strength. Having a form of godliness to ease your conscious mind for the moment. And that's what I did. I would go to church on Sunday. It wasn't religiously, but when I did go, and then I would go into the little booth, and the little window would come up, and I would make a confession to a man. <laughs> and it gave me peace for the moment. It eased my conscience for that very moment, because I was unloading my burden. But there was no power for change after Amen. that. Amen. We need the transforming power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And that's the power that the church is lacking. Amen? Amen. And that's the power that the Christian is lacking in their life. Is connecting with the Holy Ghost. Amen. For that heart transformation. And, and I love this part. Let, let's read it again. Because this is Ananias and Sapphira. Okay, we're going to go a little more into it in a second. They will act religious. All the outward signs of being God, but, but not being God-like. But they will reject the power. The power is the anointing, the spirit that could make them what? Godly. And it also says, it gives a warning to Timothy. This Apostle Paul speaking to Timothy. Stay away from people like that. What? It didn't say stay away from the lost. Uh, come on. It says stay away from those who have the confession coming out of their mouth, but their lifestyle is so far away from being in line with God. Amen. Amen. Why? Why should you stay away? Isn't it up to us to warn them as brothers and sisters in Christ? Stay away from those who who do not want to change, but are saying they go to church, but don't want the power to change so that they can live what? Godly. <laughs> holy before a holy God. Amen? Amen. Come on now. Go back with me to the book of Acts. And we'll see what uh, Ananias and Sapphira, they're a married couple, okay? And in verse 2 it says, in chapter 5, Acts 5, 2, he, bought, he brought part of the money to the apostles, claiming it was the full amount, with his wife's consent, he kept the rest. Why? Because they were making a show of their generosity. It was vain glory. They wanted to appear more generous than what they were. So they held some back. Because why? The money, the love of money, is the root of all kinds of evil. Not money itself, but the love of money. Something happened to Ananias and Sapphira before they got to the church to bring their money to the apostles. Amen. So Apostle Pop Peter is standing there waiting for the offering. And what happens? I hope y'all didn't read ahead. <laughs> y'all gonna ruin it for yourself. Come on now. Stay with the pastor. I know y'all getting excited for you students in here of the Word of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, y'all are laughing because y'all are doing it. <laughs> Verse 3, amen. <laughs> I got discernment. We're going to see how Peter operated. It says, then Peter said, Ananias, why have you let? I love this. Why have you allowed? Why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit and you kept some of the money for yourself. 
I love the scripture there. You can look up for a second. <laughs> Apostle Peter, Amen. Apostle Peter is standing there. He didn't. He didn't ask him, "Is this the full amount?" If you notice in the scripture, he didn't start questioning him randomly and putting him on the stand and cross-examining him. Apostle Peter is operating in discernment in the gifts of the Spirit that accompanies every minister that stands in that office when they're preaching and teaching the Word of God. Amen. Because God set him into that office. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And here he comes trying to deceive the Apostle Peter. Mm -hmm. And something happens to Apostle Peter. He's quickened at that very moment by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the Holy Ghost is telling him by divine inspiration, it's at the moment's time that the Holy Ghost starts ministering to Apostle Peter that they that this man is lying. Hallelujah. Has that ever happened? Has it ever happened to you? Walk in the Word and walk in the Spirit close to God and watch what God will start doing in your life. When someone lies to us, it's like when they're saying it to us, nobody here. When they're saying it to us, hallelujah. Is it me, Lord? Is it me, Lord? Am I the one that's going to betray you, Lord? Hallelujah. What happened is at that very moment, Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost. This is the way it works. And God gave him that divine inspiration at the moment that he was lying. And when someone lies to us, it's like something hits you wrong. Even when you're sitting under a minister or hearing them preaching from the television, when you're tied and you're grounded and you're rooted in God's Word, when it starts to go over you, it hits you wrong. Like, Lord, I just don't agree with that. I don't, ident I don't identify with what they're saying because you have so much of the Word of God already in you. Hallelujah. Amen. So you can rightly divide the Word of truth. That's why the Bible says, study, 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 study to show thyself approved. Amen. Amen. Unto God, Amen. a workman that will never be ashamed Woo. by the devil. You will never be deceived, saint. Amen. And that is one of his greatest tactics, is to get the Christian who doesn't study. Then he can start lying to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Because once you enter into Christianity, Satan is gunning for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, so it's up to you to start getting equipped. That's why you ever go to one of these events, uh, meetings and, and you get saved, the first thing they should say is get into a good Bible teaching church Amen. so you can start to grow in your faith. Amen. 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 Hold your place there. It's going to get gooder. <laughs> mm -hmm. Go with me to James chapter 4. James chapter 4 verse 7. Towards the back of the book. Revelation, 3rd John, 2nd John, 1st John, 2nd Peter, 1st Peter, Ooh, and then James. You like that? Amen. Went backwards. Hallelujah. I think I did that right. <laughs> <laughs> Praise Jesus. James chapter 4, verse 7. This is what they should have done. I don't want to give you all that's happening without equipping you as a pastor on what you as the saint do to resist from Satan filling your heart because it says in the book of Acts chapter four, uh, chapter 5 verse 4 it said why have you let why have you allowed him in Satan why did you let him in so that means it's our responsibility to do something about Satan hallelujah Amen. but you got to understand say everybody look up here you got to understand that he was defeated at the cross yes. hallelujah Amen. the bible says that when he hung on that cross spiritual principalities were sent to flight mm -hmm. and he destroyed the works of the devil Amen. the devil had claim on every one of us before we got saved because of sin and because of original sin that came through Adam and Eve so everyone that was conceived birthed into the earth we were already born dead mm -hmm. isn't that exciting? Yeah. <laughs> why? because we inherited original sin from Adam and Eve, our ancestors. And that's why we need a transformation through the power of God, Amen. Jesus Christ, and what He did for us at the cross. Amen. 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 So what do we do, Christian? Hallelujah. James 4, 7 says, So humble yourself before God. Resist the devil, mm -hmm. 
and He will flee from you. Humble yourselves before God. That means submitting before God. That means telling God you cannot do it on your own. You cannot resist Satan outside of humbling yourself before the Lord. Amen. Do you know that? And how do you do it? When you humble yourself before God, you're telling God, I cannot do this without you. I need your strength. Amen. Amen. I need your presence. I need your grace to be able to withstand the wiles of the devil that are coming against me right now. Amen. Because I'm being tempted. Yes. And I'm being tempted greatly. Yes. So what's the first thing that's commanded by the Apostle James? He says, fall on your face. Humble yourself before God. And admit that you need His help. Yes. And sometimes He allows Satan, come on now, <laughs> to come in and buffet you. But I believe He calls those that are great. Hallelujah. Yes. Did you see my, my servant Job? Amen. And how godly and how wonderful. Because God knows they can withstand what's coming. Amen. You, ever, you get saved and you're barely coming into Christ and you're feeling that salvation and the Holy Ghost is overtaken and there's really, God just has this giant hedge around you and it seems like nothing. You're just invincible. Yeah. Amen. And then it starts to change a little. God says, okay, I've kind of held you in my arms and rocked you long enough. Now I'm going to equip you because I've given you something. The devil has no legal claim over you once you've given your life to Christ. The legal claim he had because of sin has been destroyed because you've given your life to Christ. But we still have a devil. And he still tempts us. He can't possess us, but he can tempt us. Amen. He can't control you, but he can tempt you. That's really all he has is a bunch of solicitations over your life, whisperings over your life. So you need to submit, humble yourself before God, and resist him with everything you have. Amen? Amen. And the Bible says he, God promises what? He'll flee. Amen. He's got to go. Amen. Oh, I can't, I, I can't get around Sister Norma for too long, the devil. Can't get around her because she knows how to humble herself. She knows how to go to God. I'm going to have a lot, lot, probably a lot more trouble with Sister Norma. Let me come over here and see if I can grab someone else that's not reading the Word or going to church or praying. Because yeah. he's watching. Yeah. Seeking who may what? Devour. Devour. So you must be watchful, prayerful unto the coming day of our Lord and Savior. Amen. Prayerful, watchful. Amen. So when he does come, what do you do? It is written. It should just rise up automatically Amen. when the enemy starts hitting you. Ananias and Sapphira didn't do that. Amen. They let Satan fill their heart instead of submitting themselves, resisting the devil. And the devil has to flee Amen. for a season because he will come back. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you must stay ready again to resist him in the faith. Amen. You cannot do it in your own will. Many years I tried to get set free from drugs. I tried to get set free from alcohol. And I could not do it. Though your heart is willing the flesh is so weak. Hallelujah. Cannot do it in your strength. Cannot do it in your will. Cannot do it in your flesh. Not by might. Not by strength. But by thy spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. 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 Go back to the book of Acts. Verse 4. It says, the property was yours to sell. He's talking to Ananias. As you wished, you could have done whatever, whatever you wanted with it. After selling it, the money was yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You weren't lying to us, but to God. You're, look up here, saints. You're, you're not trying to get over or trying to fool man by appearing a certain way. Because God knows your heart. You don't lie to man, but to God. When he, lied, when he lied to Apostle Peter, he was lying against the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let's keep reading. Y'all sound excited. <laughs> you got to remember, this is early church. This is New Testament. This is after the cross. Amen. Verse 5. As soon as Ananias heard these words, he fell to the floor and repented. Oh no, he didn't say that. He fell to the floor and asked for God's mercy. No, he didn't say that either. He fell to the floor and died. 
What? The first recorded death in the New Testament church. And where did it happen? In church. Hallelujah. Let's keep reading. And it says, everyone who heard about it was terrified. Now, there's two school of there's two school of thoughts here about how that was carried out. This particular man dying in church. Okay? The first thought that it was an angel that came down to execute the judgment and carry it out on the instruction of God. Okay? That's one school of thought. Another is, and I have a tendency to lean this way, is that when he was exposed, and when the apostle exposed the lie that he was trying to portray, trying to commit, and the sin against God Himself, and against the Holy Ghost, that somehow his conscience was so convicted, and so guilt-ridden and stricken, that he had a heart attack and died. What accounts for all the sickness and all the stress and all the disease in the world today? Sin. Yeah. Amen? Sin. Not God. Sin. The Bible says, those who are heavy burdened with sin, let them come that I may give them rest. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Only God, through Jesus Christ, can forgive your sin and remove the guilt from your conscious mind. Amen. So that you're free to serve a living God, a holy God, Amen. because of the blood of Jesus that was shed at the cross. Amen. Is that good news? Yes. Let's give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. So we have the first recorded death. Okay, now, now everybody look up here because it's very important. Because I love this. God gave me this. Why doesn't it happen today? You ever think about that? You come in. You're coming in with a form of godliness. Just going through the motions, pretending, lying, holding back tithes, holding back offerings, coming, putting in a tithe that you know isn't correct, and, and no one's dying. Thank God for that, amen? Thank God for that. Because we'd have a lot of dead people in our church. Amen? Come on. Wouldn't that bring some fear in the church? Well, God is real over at the Hand of God Ministry. We had a man die right here in front of the time. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why it didn't happen. The first church ever. There wasn't any other local branches yet. Hallelujah. It was the first branch that was being established. So it was in danger of being destroyed by allowing this man and woman to come in and deceive to bring that spirit into the church of lying, deception, pride, everything was trying to come in and the, and the Lord said, nah, cannot do that because I'm barely establishing the church. So the judgment at that time was a little different. Amen. Are you with me? That makes sense. You got to think about it because there's a lot of people that are disobedient and they're not dying. Amen? But they're dying spiritually. Amen. And I want you to understand that. We have a lot of people in the body of Christ in this day and age because church has been so modernized. You don't even see God through all the smoke and all the glitter and all of the glitz that's happening on stage. Amen? All of the yelling and all of the carrying on when there's no substance and there's no truth coming forth to set you free. Come on, man. Going Amen. So okay. And I love this. Everyone who heard about it was terrified. That means it spread through the entire church. The apostle Peter and the apostles, the main ones there, they didn't get what's called the cover-up media crew to come in and cover up the story. To make the church keep looking puffy and entertaining and, 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 and a good field church to come in and never be convicted of sin so that you can turn away. They told everyone in the church, we had someone die because of disobedience. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> and what happened? What was the result? God got the glory because fear came on the church. Amen. That fear has been lost in America. 
Amen. There's no fear of God anymore. Yep. Amen. Am I right? Amen. If they were, we'd have some holy living Christians right now. Amen. Living holy before the Lord. Would stay out of that establishment. Would stay away from that relationship. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the fear of God. Amen. I'm not talking about a cowering kind. Or, oh, I'm so afraid. And tr it's a trembling reverence before a holy God. Amen. Let's keep going. Let's go to verse 6. It says, Then some young men, how many know we need young men to do physical labor? Young men got up, wrapped him in a sheet. He was dead. They didn't even check his pulse. They knew he had died. <laughs> and took, this poor guy. <laughs> and took him out and they buried him. Didn't even give the man a proper burial. They wrapped him in, in some sheets and just, let's go. Took him out probably in that little dirt and just buried him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on now. That's what you do with sin. You take it out, you wrap it up, and you bury it. Amen. Are you with me? Some of y'all need to go home, wrap that sin up in a sheet through the power of Christ, and bury it. Hallelujah. Don't bring it back to life. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Leave it dead. Amen. That's a word for some of y'all tonight. Amen. Verse 7. Where's the wife in all this? I got a feeling she sent her husband ahead to make sure everything was going to be okay first. <laughs> She's going to find out it really wasn't. Amen? Husband and wives always conspire together. Verse 7. About three hours later, listen to this, three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened to her husband. Peter asked her, was this the price you and your husband received for your land. I want you to stop there because sometimes you read that and you just go right over it. Do you know how specific that question was? The lady should have already been trembling. Oh my gosh, why is he asking this? He knows exactly what I'm doing. He asked about, is this the right price? Is this the amount you and your husband agreed to? He didn't say, where, where have you, what's going on? What's happening? What have you been? He asked a specific question concerning the very sin that she was involved in. The first thing that should have came to the wife was, oh, yes, this was, this was this is what I was doing. And asking God right there at that very moment, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Father. I believe that was God's mercy being extended over the wife because of what happened to the husband. And the whole church knew about it. Three hours later, God said, okay, let's see if she's going to confess after I directly ask her a question. But she didn't. Let's keep reading. Peter asked her, Was this the price you and your husband received for your land? Yes, she replied, That was the price. <laughs> but she doesn't know where her husband is. She's probably looking in the church. Where's my husband at? What happened to my husband? I was supposed to meet him here and he's not here. Where's he at? Verse 9. And Peter said, Look at this. How could the two of you even think of conspiring to test the spirit of the Lord like this. The young men who buried your husband are just outside the door. And they will carry you out too. Go to one more place. Go with me to Matthew chapter 4 verse 7. Matthew chapter 4 verse 7. Y'all enjoying this tonight? Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, there's a lot of Matthew chapter 4, verse 7. There's a lot of examples in the book of Acts of the apostles executing judgment upon someone that's coming against them. Because there's, there's a level of anointing and authority that comes with this office. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible is clear about these things. Do not touch God's anointed and do his prophets no harm. Don't come against the church of the living God. The Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of the living God. His word shall go forth, his kingdom shall go forth, and you shall go forth. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. Matthew 4, 7 says, Jesus responded. The scriptures also say, he's talking to the enemy. You must not test the Lord your God. Go back to the book of Acts. You must not test the Lord your God. Jesus speaking this. Verse 9 says, And Peter said, How could the two of you even think of conspiring to test the Spirit of the Lord like this? How do we test the Lord? 
How do we tempt the Lord? The way the Christian tempts or tests the Lord is by trying to abuse the grace that God has given you. That means getting too far out in your sinful life or whatever sin you're entertaining or participating in. Are you with me now? I'm talking to the saved believer. Amen. Not if you're lost. This is for the saved believer. That if you continue in that sin long enough, you're testing the Spirit of the Lord. Because during that time, what do you think is happening to you and with the Spirit of God? He's dealing with you. He's convicting your heart. He's wooing you to come to Him. And He's telling you, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. Amen. So you don't ignore, you don't test the Spirit of the Lord by rejecting the Spirit of God when He begins to minister and convict because He wants to love he wants to deliver and He wants to give you strength for that situation. Amen. Are you with me? Amen? Let's keep reading. He said, Why have you tested the Spirit of the Lord like this? The young men who buried your husband are just outside the door. And they will carry you out too. In verse 10, Instantly she fell to the floor and died. When the young men came in and saw that she was dead, they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. At least they gave her a burial next to her husband. Hallelujah. Amen. And do you know if you go into uh, commentaries and read the backdrop story of the two, that they were buried near the church that they were meeting in as a witness and a remembering of what it is when you disobey or lie to the Spirit of God. This is the result right here. Oh, you don't want to hear that though, right? God, just tell me about <laughs> prosperity and healing and blessings. And My gosh, what kind of ministry is this? Talking about dying in God. Hallelujah. Amen. There's nothing like that. It's read your Bible. Because you've been lied to about God. <laughs> He's a loving God. He's a good God. Yes. You can't preach grace, 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 love, love, love without the just, just, just. And the consequences, consequences. Those who sow to the flesh shall reap destruction of the flesh. Those who sow to the Spirit shall reap everlasting life. And he says, godliness, physical exercise, the Bible says, profits very little. And we have a lot of people that are so overly, uh, consciously about their physical appearance. And it says it profits very little in the Bible. But godliness promises riches today and in the next life. Amen. Amen. True godliness. Train yourself up in the ways of God and see what happens. Amen? Amen. That's good. Verse 10. Instantly she fell to the floor and died. When the young men came in and saw that she was dead, they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Verse 11, great fear gripped the entire church. There's that word fear again. Great fear gripped the entire church and everyone else who heard what had happened. Luke 12, 5 says, but I tell you whom to fear. Fear God who has the power to kill you and then throw you into hell. Yes, he's the one to fear. Amen. I told you before in this ministry, I don't fear the devil. Because the devil has no claim on me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. His legal right into my life was canceled as soon as I received Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, his claim on me is no more. Amen. The only claim he has is what I allow and give to him. Are you with me? Go with me to verse 12. The apostles were performing many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And all the believers were meeting regularly at the temple in the area known as Solomon's Colonnade. We're going to finish up at verse 16. But no one else dared to join them, even though all the people had high regard for them. 
Yet more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord. Crowds of both men and women. As a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought out of the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as they were passing by and they were healed. Verse 16. Crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits, and they were all healed. There it is. Close your Bibles. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. In closing, I want you to take this away tonight. Let us not resist the Holy Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Amen? Let's stand.